Hey Crypt Keepers, thank you so much for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Today in this episode we're doing something a little bit different and we are looking at the creepiest churches in the world. Now not all of these churches are necessarily haunted but all of them have something a little bit off about them, a little bit creepy. So let's dive straight into the first location. Our first creepy church on this list brings us to Rome, Italy, a very old city with a lot of history at each corner. Resting along the shores of one of Rome's most prominent rivers is an old Gothic church that hides a very dark secret tucked away in one of its back rooms. Here you will find the Museum of Purgatory. Within this small room are artifacts and photos believed to be proof of souls stuck in purgatory. The collection contains some interesting pieces that have supposedly been touched and therefore marked by those poor souls. You will find handprints and silhouettes stained on various objects including clothing, Bibles and plenty more everyday objects. These are typically manifested in burns. Purgatory is an old Catholic belief where the soul becomes trapped in a limbo state after a person dies and they are usually not able to be free of purgatory until they can atone for their sins. The marks left on these items are supposedly from deceased family members visiting their living relatives for help. Since they are stuck in purgatory, they would visit and urge their family to pray intensely for their soul and assist them in reaching heaven. All objects were then later donated to this museum. The museum is creepy, fascinating and disturbing, especially the supposed demonic face that became burned into the former walls of another church. Do you believe that souls can become trapped in purgatory and return with the power to burn items such as books and clothing? So these are some of the burnt items. You can see handprints. These are also hands here. Open fingertips. This one's a handprint on an apron. There's a few here. That's actually a photocopy, as is this one. Another handprint, kind of this way. But there are all these books as well. This face one on the end is creepy. Looks like the devil. So that one was left behind by a fire right on a wall. Yeah. If we travel on over to Romania, we'll find another creepy church. At first glance, the Snagov Monastery doesn't appear all too creepy. It sits on a small island. It is quiet and charming as anything, but it is rumoured to hold the remains of one of the most infamous bloodthirsty rulers of all time. The Snagov Monastery was founded back in the 14th century, though more than just one church has stood upon the island since then. It started as a wooden structure, yet was destroyed after sinking into the surrounding lake. The fate of this church led the locals to believe that the island may in fact be cursed. Arguably, the main reason why this monastery is well known is for being the final resting place for Vlad Sepesh, who is also known as Vlad the Impaler, and for being the real life inspiration for Bram Stoker's novel Dracula. During his life, Vlad was a ruler within the Romanian district of Wallachia. He defended his country against the invading Ottoman Empire and of course became notorious for his ruthless war tactics. These included his signature execution and torture method, impalement. There remains much controversy and mystery surrounding not only Vlad's death, but also his place of burial. He's said to have been ambushed and beheaded just outside of Bucharest, however the details of his death aren't really well known. His body is said to have made its way to the Snagov Monastery and to have been buried at the entrance to this church. This was a strategic move, as Vlad had committed so many atrocities during his life, more than any one person should ever have. So placing him at the entrance to the church would allow each person who enters it to take some of his sins upon themselves. The island church is also thought to have made for an appropriate location for Vlad's burial, as he did have some links to the location in his life. He is thought to have had fortifications surrounding the island, as well as a prison and torture chamber on the island itself. There are rumours, however, that this is not the final resting place for Vlad, and an excavation of the church in the 1930s seemed to support this. Animal bones and artefacts were found in the place where Vlad was rumoured to be resting, yet many still claim he is buried at the monastery. 
likely just in another place or deeper than where it was excavated. This is it guys, it's Dracula's grave. Our next creepy church brings us to my home state of South Australia. In a rural and remote part of the state exists an artificial ghost town known as Old Talem Town. This place basically consists of buildings, many of which are more than 100 years old, that have been abandoned and then relocated to this town from all over Australia. There's a lot of history linked to many of these places, with a lot of that history being dark and unfortunate. Because of this, the town is claimed to be quite haunted and many of the buildings are said to contain their own spirits. This is one of my personal favourite locations that I have ever investigated. I visited last year for Halloween with my friends at Adelaide's Haunted Horizons. I'll link those videos below for you, as well as links to Haunted Horizons because you should go follow them. One of the most active buildings for paranormal activity and likely the most haunted on the property is the Old Walsley Church. This place has become pretty notorious within South Australia for being haunted. Many people have reported to feel strange sensations within the church, sight shadow figures, and it is also reported to be haunted by a small child who drowned on the property many, many years ago. We certainly had some interesting moments during my last paranormal investigation within this very church. Ian, if you are here. Oh, that's so creepy. Pray. Right. Well, that's mm. why I'm in church. Yeah, yeah. That's very relevant. Yes, <laughs> torch doesn't work. What was that? All right, guys. So we're just setting up a couple of pieces. All right. So paranormal music box is going off by itself. There's two things going off now. Oh, in this area. That's the doorway where there's been figures seen, right? Just one noise so that we know that you're here. that. On to our next creepy destination, and this one takes us back to Romania. The Carter Monastery sits in the Transylvanian countryside and looks a pretty picture, but it is linked to some pretty dark stories. The monastery was formed in the 1200s and is the oldest Gothic fortified church in Eastern Europe. Most would know this place as being the location where the horror film, The Nun, which is part of the Conjuring universe, was set. Though the films portray a demonic nun haunting the abbey, there's no real story of this happening at the actual Carter Monastery. That's not to say it doesn't have its own ghost stories though. During medieval times, monks inhabited the monastery, yet it was not a pleasant place to reside. They lived a harsh life and most of them didn't make it past 40 years of age. It is these monks who made up the first of the abbey's actual ghost stories. To this day, many of them remain buried within the church's yard. Countless visitors to the church have sighted the apparitions of ghostly white monks walking around the monastery before disappearing. In addition to these monks, two unmarked graves were recently uncovered within the church's underground cellar. These graves contain the bodies of two men who were some 6.5 feet tall, which was extremely odd in their day. It is speculated that these men may have been shipped off to the monastery to keep them out of the public eye. Ever since these bodies have been disturbed, strange occurrences have been reported in the cellars. Supposedly the walls will at times suddenly start to vibrate and aggressive poltergeist activity has started to occur too. Supposedly, even within the church, chairs would be dragged across the floor by invisible forces. Wow, so inside the church is very cool. It's quite beautiful. So this is the only st remaining structure of the Carter Monastery that is still in use. The final place on this list is reserved for the extremely creepy and well-known Bone Church in Kutnahora of the Czech Republic. From the outside, it seems a pretty normal and standard place, very similar to other churches all across Europe. But as you step inside, things take a dark turn. Inside the Sedlec Ossuary or Bone Church, one will find elaborate designs constructed completely out of real human bones. It is said to contain the remains of between 40 to 70,000 people. You will find bone pyramids, a bone coat of arms, towers of skulls, 
and even an intricate chandelier that is said to contain at least one of each type of bone found in the human body. Fun fact for any horror fans watching, this place also inspired Dr. Satan's lair in Rob Zombie's House of Thousand Corpses. The story of this ossuary starts sometime in the 13th century when an abbot made the pilgrimage to the Holy Land of Jerusalem. Upon his return, he sprinkled some soil he'd taken from the Holy Land over the local cemetery, and in turn, this made it a very sought-after place to be buried. Later, plague and fierce battles swept through Europe, leaving many fatalities behind. This saw an influx of new bodies to be buried, and it wasn't too long until this small cemetery was overflowing. To counteract this issue, many bodies were exhumed and stored in a purpose-built church in the 1400s. Then a half-blind monk was tasked with cleaning, sorting and displaying the bones. During the 1800s, the bones were then placed into far more artistic displays that are seen today. What are your views on the bone church? Eerily beautiful or just plain eerie? Either way, I feel like the Sedlec Ossuary is a perfect fit for the number one spot on this list of the creepiest churches in the world. So the church, the bone church, has a skull and crossbone gold decorations on top of it. It also has skull and crossbones here on the fence. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I would love to know all of your thoughts about each of these churches. My personal favorite is number one, the Sedlec Ossuary, but I would love to know which one you guys would choose to visit. If you could pick any one of these places, which one would you go to? Or maybe you just want to avoid them all. If you want to do any more reading on any one of these places or any of the haunted locations that I visited from all around the world, you can do so over at my website, amyscrypt.com. You guys can also follow me. I'm at Amy's Crypt on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm also posting a ton of bonus content, bonus videos over on my Patreon and my YouTube members, which I'm going to link below for you guys. But thank you so much for watching, Crypt Keepers. Until next time.